when you're in the midst of all that pressure, that's already too late. We want to get you before you feel that pressure. Your job isn't to do data entry and find phone numbers or respond to customers that are contacting you on Facebook. Your job is to grow your business. Welcome to the My Future Business Show with Rick Nusky, interviewing the biggest names in business to help you become successful. At the end of the call, get your free Better Business Builder Forum access where you can promote your business, access all of our premium content, and get live, private, one-on-one access to myself as you build your business. Go to myfuturebusiness.com forward slash members. Hi and welcome to the My Future Business Show. Today I'm here with Andrea Rosman of YourGirlFriday.com. How are you, Andrea? I am doing great, Rick. How are you today? I'm superb. Thank you very much for asking. I noticed that uh, when I'm looking through your website, of which we'll share the details at the end of the call, that you've been noted on CBS News Money Watch, the Huffington Post and Forbes and the likes. When we think about virtual assistants, what are we talking about exactly? Well, from my perspective and the the human perspective, a virtual assistant is someone that helps you and your business. They just don't go to your business to do it. So I help people. I have helped people all over the world, but I have only ever met one of my clients in person. Oh, wow. What are some of the things that uh, a virtual assistant can do for a business? Well, there are virtual assistants that are specific to a task, uh, perhaps they're bookkeepers or accountants, Mm -hmm. social media, uh, bloggers. Think of it in, in the most basic of terms. It's a secretary or an office manager that is doing all of those tasks that you would have if somebody was sitting there at a desk in an office. It could be customer service, billing, invoicing. We do social media, posting for people. Uh, It's internet research involved. Mm -hmm. Every business has its own needs and virtual assistants, they fit into those needs. I've looked at other places like the Philippines who also provide um, virtual assistants. Um, Are they something to stay away from? There are good and bad virtual assistants everywhere. Mm-hmm. That goes for any job, any 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 role anywhere. Mm. You have to find the one that works for you. Mm-hmm. A lot of businesses will go to the Philippines because yeah. it's it's very cheap labor. Mm-hmm. I don't believe you should base your choice on dollars alone. No. Every business has different needs and there are going to be, there are clients that I have worked with for over five years. They're fantastic and we work together well and it's perfect. And I've had clients that have signed on and after maybe a few weeks, we can't work together because we aren't a good fit. And that makes absolute sense because I've, I've tried to use uh, Philippine um, outsourcing services and I've also um, worked with a lady in the States and it's um, apples and oranges. I don't think they can necessarily directly be um, compared. I found that the grasp on the uh, English language was different. I wouldn't right. say better or worse. It was just different. And I found it um, that the quality of, of the work coming out of the States for me, and it might be different for others, I'm sure that it is, was actually of a higher quality. Um, where in fact are you based? I am in Michigan. But my team members, they are located, apart from Michigan, they're located in Illinois and Tennessee. Okay. So I've been looking at your about page and love to hear a little bit more about you. Sure. Uh, Well, I, prior to being the virtual (laughs) assistant that I am today, you know, I I went to college. Mm -hmm. I have a degree in English. I worked in corporate America. I worked for uh, companies like Pfizer, Blue Cross. Chrysler, various IT project management positions. Right. And one day when the whole economy started going bad, about, it was about a decade ago, yeah, mm-hmm. uh, I lost my job and I decided, you know, what am I going to do? Yep. And I, of course, I was applying for jobs and interviewing, but when the economy goes, you, there really isn't anything you can do about it. Mm-hmm. So I just decided I was going to see if I could just keep skills up. That's all I wanted to do is keep my skills up. And 
So I looked online and maybe there's something I can do. And actually there was an, um, well, my first client or my second client was actually an Australian company. Mm. So, and it was literally just tr- typing up meeting minutes that they had recorded, yep. which, you know, nothing exciting, but it, it kept my brain active. And I thought, okay, this is just a stopgap measure until I could find, you know, the quote unquote real job. Yeah. yeah. And then one day I'm sitting there and I had gotten a new client and then another new client. And I'm thinking, can I do this? Is this a job? <laughs> this can't be a job. Really? You know, I could, I could actually do this from my home. Mm-hmm. And it turns out, yeah. You can. So ever since then, I have just been uh, helping people with all sorts of fun and unusual tasks. This seems like a very common story. I don't think necessarily that it's um, U.S. economy specific. It seems to be a global event that I'm getting a, right. a, a theme for, that people are highly skilled in the corporate world and then for one reason or another their their position is no longer available and they move into this online space. This uh, era that we live in is an amazing uh, opportunity for anybody to start a business essentially who has something to offer, a skill set. How would you right. suggest that they go about doing this if they wanted to do this themselves? I think you have to start by looking at yourself and say, and you have to ask some hard questions. The can I do this question comes up after 10 years, it still comes up. Yeah. There are still doubts. There are still, you know, I should just, this isn't working. I should just go back and, and go sit at an office desk somewhere in some corporation and, you know, do what I used to do. Yeah. It's, I think the biggest thing about, starting your own business, big or small, is you have to find the strength to silence those little voices that go, you, you're not really, do, you can't do this. Mm. This isn't, this is what you, you know, just, just go do the easy way. It's hard. Mm. It's hard. And there are huge disappointments and there are failures and there are huge mistakes you make and you have to be able to just skip over them and, and learn and move on and you have to keep wanting to move on you have to really have a strong disposition (laughs) to to do something like that and i appreciate you sharing this with our audience because at the end of the day my future business is about helping entrepreneurs either they're established or they're up and coming to give them a realistic perspective of how rewarding but at the same time, how realistically difficult this can be for them. Because at the end of the day, this is not about sugarcoating um, a business and, and saying, hey, look, you know, just set up a website, really easy to do, and away you go, you've got a business. Right. <laughs> you know, you've, that's, that's the easy part. <laughs> that's, that's the easy part. How long has uh, the Your Gal Friday been up and running? Your Gal Friday has been around for 10 years. Mm-hmm. The website itself is about eight of those years. Right. For the first couple of her first couple of years, I just I was probably toying around with everything. So the uh, the my future business audience is very interested in making their life easier. <laughs> this much I know, right. <laughs> and that's what essentially your Gal Friday is all about. Is is, is about taking those um, often mundane tasks and and processing data and compiling reports and building um, procedures and doing social media and the list goes on and on and on. If you had to choose the top three things that you guys are really, really good at, what would they be? Research. Research. I think that's probably a number one thing. We're really nosy and we're really good about (laughs) finding things. You have to be. (laughs) We're really good about finding things that need to be found. Uh, We do a lot of research information, finding names, addresses, contact, emails, and phone numbers, which a lot of people, they look, no, it's not there. Oh, it's there. You just have, you, you just have to know where to look. You have to, you know, turn mm-hmm. over a few stones. Mm-hmm. So there's that. Um, we do transcription. Love to do that. Yep. Uh, we've transcribed for PhD candidates. We've transcribed for public speakers, interviews, everything. Uh, we love to do social media posting for people. Um, we love customer service, helping some of our clients out with that. So a little bit of everything. Yeah, it seems to me like, um, you know, I, I personally, I have uh, times where I think I just can't be bothered doing this because it's so mundane. And this right. is where the, the world of virtual assistants comes into into their own because they take away that 
that load those things that I'm not necessarily good at. And it's one of those things where as a business owner, there comes a time when you're starting out, you do everything yourself. Yeah. And then you you have to and you go crazy and you feel all that pressure. And it's at that moment, actually before we like to say right before that is when you need to call us. Mm. Because when you're in the midst of all that pressure, that's already too late. We want to get you before you feel that pressure. Your job isn't to do data entry and find phone numbers or respond to customers that are contacting you on Facebook. Your job is to grow your business. And you should be out talking to people and marketing and, and interacting. Let us do all of those little things that you shouldn't be doing. You need to focus on the big picture, and we're going to take care of all the little little bits and pieces so you don't have to do that. And it's hard to let go. It is hard. It, I know when I started this, it was all, it was me, me, me. And I, it, you can't, there's no way you can do it all. No. And the first time you hire somebody and say, okay, here's some work for you to do. You just freak out. It's so scary because this is your baby and you've grown it mm. and you don't want anybody else messing around with it because no. you don't th you know they can't do a good of, as good of a job as you do yeah. but they do and they they can and you really have to learn to trust people and and to find the perfect people that will help you with your business um for those who are listening to the call today that that is a a, a golden piece of information bit of knowledge there to take away is that get in front of somebody like andrea and her team before you start realizing you're in too deep. I often right. think, Andrea, that a lot of the decision is based on the cost. What what would you say to people like like that that are thinking that way? Right. Um, I, I look at it this way. It, it, I've had the hurdle of cost and um, I've, I've had to get over that with, the, you know, with software purchases or advertising, things of that nature. What is five hours of your week worth to you? If you, like, uh, our our minimum hourly rate is $20 an hour. That's U.S. dollars. Yeah. So $100, even if it was one month, even if you set aside one hour a week or an hour and 20 minutes or whatever, what could you accomplish in that time? And when you start to see how much you you can do if you just offload that little piece, I mean, when we when we talk about like research, we do research. We've been doing research for ten years. Mm -hmm. We know how to do it, and we do it really fast. That research that might take us two hours might take you five hours or eight hours because you're struggling because you don't know where to look. Mm -hmm. So you have to monetize it that way. You have to think how much is it how much is it costing you in time? Time is extremely precious as a business owner. Mm. There never is enough time. <laughs> there <No>. never is. <laughs> and if you can give a few hours away to somebody who can give you back some time, I think that's fantastic. And it's and I think also being a a parent and running a business, I find that yes. having <laughs> having time to spend with your children is another good reason for me personally to outsource some of this work and absolutely you know it, i agree because <laughs> it's not it's not all just it's not all just business i mean essentially what we're talking about is very business focused but a large amount of people that i work with are also parents and they're always looking for that extra bit of time to be able to spend playing with their kids but they just can't do it because they're so like you said earlier, so buried in the work thinking they can do everything, where in actual fact they can't. Right. So No, and you shouldn't. And letting go is the scariest but best thing in the world to do. Mm. It's so nice. When I didn't have a team, I was frantic. Mm. Now that I have people I can rely on, with a, if a new project comes in, I say, okay, here are the details, go for it. I can sit back and go, Oh, this is great. Hey, I'm going to go, you know, pick up my son from school and then we're going to, you know, play video games or something. Yeah, <laughs> you know? whatever it is. Yeah. You, know, you feel it's like you feel freed and empowered, don't you? Yes. So. Yes. I mean, I'm still doing a lot of work, but I'm doing different work. I'm I'm reaching out to people and I'm networking and I'm growing 
the business for my team. Mm -hmm. But I have time to do that now. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, if you, if you weren't doing that um, high level work in growing and expanding your business, then the people that you do end up hiring, you may not be able to sustain their position because you're not growing. So that's another reason it's so important to consider the cost. Absolutely. When I, when I first started um, working with VAs some time ago, one of the mistakes I made was to try and get them to essentially do everything for me. How do you manage people that come to you saying, I want this, 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 and this done, and it's just way too much? What do you say to them? I always tell people, ask me to do something. If I can't do it, I'll tell you. Mm -hmm. Like uh, like web development, I don't I don't do websites. I am not a designer. I can't I can't do that. Yep. Can I update your website a little bit for you? Sure, I can do some basics, but I am not going to create a website for you. I, I'm I'm not an expert in that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but I have plenty of clients that will come to me in the beginning and just say, Hey, I need somebody to do this, and then six months in. We're doing 10 or 15 different tasks. Yeah. But that's okay. My prior life was working in a really chaotic environment, working on multiple projects, doing all types of tasks. Mm -hmm. So when I get a lot of things going on, it's, I'm sort of in my element. You know, most people kind of freak out when there's a lot of, <laughs> a lot of craziness going yeah. on, but it just seems it's very natural to me to have. 15 different tasks going on all at once. It just seems, it, it's like, it's very really comfortable, which is probably a little odd. <laughs> you mentioned earlier about having a project management background. You would understand the importance um, from a, I guess, from a chronological timeline that, you know, we've got a lot of work going on, but you know how to structure it such that, you know, when you hit key milestones and certain things are done by certain dates, you know, it all seems right. to pan out at the end of the day. Right. A lot of people question, well, it's like, well, how can you work with multiple clients? When you understand the task and you understand the time it takes for every task, it's just, it's very simple. Mm -hmm. I've never run into a moment where I couldn't do one project because of another one. Mm -hmm. How big is your team at the moment? It is uh, me and three others at the moment. Right. But I'm hoping to grow. <laughs> yeah, hoping to grow, of course, of course. And, and that's the whole uh, idea of uh, having businesses like yourself on the My Future Business Show that we can, so that we can get your message out there and, and help you uh, help others. So sure. where can people find you, Andrea? They can reach out to me at your-gal-friday.com. And if they put a forward slash mfb podcast on that mm -hmm. they will get to a special page just for your listeners just for them well there you go that's excellent news thanks again for coming on to the my future business show today well i appreciate the time that we've had rick and if there's anything i can do for anyone they just have to reach out to me and for those who are listening to the My Future Business show today, you will find the links to Andrea's business below this. Reach out to Andrea. I'm sure her and her team will be looking forward to hearing from you. It's been a pleasure having you on the call with us today. Now click on that big red subscribe button and join us inside the Better Business Builder forum at myfuturebusiness.com forward slash members.